Active Directory Federation Services How-To Video Series Installing an ADFS Server Farm My name is Joji Oshima, Senior Support Escalation Engineer on the Windows Identity Team. In this video, we will go over how to install an ADFS Server Farm using Server Manager. In order to repeat this demo, you will need one server running Windows Server 2012 R2, one SSL certificate that validates using the Federation service name, domain administrator credentials, and the ability to create an A record in your local DNS provider. To begin the installation, we have to start with Server Manager, and we'll click on Add Roles and Features. This will bring up the Add Roles and Features wizard. We'll choose a role-based installation. We'll choose the local server. And here we'll pick Active Directory Federation Services. We do have the option of installing additional features at this time, but we will not need any for this demo. We'll receive additional information about Active Directory Federation Services and some of the requirements. Once we click Install, Server Manager will begin installing the bits down on the server. This will not do any of the configuration, but simply put all of the files that are necessary to run the services on the local server. I fast forwarded the video to the end of the installation. Here we're given an option to configure the Federation service. We're given two options. One is to create the Federation server farm, and the second is to add this server to an existing farm. We're going to choose create the first Federation server and a Federation server farm. We need domain administrator credentials to perform this operation. By default, it will pull in the current user's credentials, but we can use the Change button should we want to use alternate credentials. We need to provide an SSL certificate for the service. Any certificates that are already installed will be listed in this drop-down box, but if we need to install additional ones, we can use this Import button. The Federation service name is important. In this case, we cannot use the wildcard certificate name but we want to choose a generic name that will be used for the entire service. We can also choose a display name that will help make a more friendly approach for this service. We need to choose a service account that this service will run under. We can create a group managed service account or we can use an existing account already created. We're given the option of installing a WID farm or use an existing SQL server. In previous versions, we would have to use PowerShell in order to use a SQL server farm. I'm going to choose the Windows internal database. We're given an option to review all of the choices we made during the configuration wizard. A quick prerequisite check will occur. This will note anything that may cause any installation issues. I fast forwarded the video again to the end of the configuration. Here we can use Server Manager to access the ADFS Management Console. From the Management Console, we can look at any options and configure any relying party trusts or claims provider trusts inside Active Directory Federation Services. To finalize your installation, you'll need to register your Federation service name and DNS. I've already registered ADFS.Contosa.com in my local DNS server. If we want to test to make sure the Federation service is running, we'll need to browse the IDP-initiated sign-on page. In this case, that's going to be adfs.contoso.com slash adfs slash ls slash idp initiated sign on dot aspx. We can click the sign in button and we can confirm that we are now signed into the service. In this video, you learned how to install, deploy, and configure Active Directory Federation services on Windows Server 2012 R2 using Server Manager. Moving forward, you can try the installation process on your own. 
And you can also watch additional videos in the How-To video series. I want to thank you for watching this video, and have a great day.